Praise the Lord. You may be seated this evening. It's good to be in church on a beautiful Sunday night. Praise God. At this time, Brother Ron is coming to help us to receive the Sunday evening tithe and offering. All Christians pay tithe. Amen. We can give online. You can scan the QR code there for our website. There's an online giving page there. Or on Cash App at dollar sign JCNTCC. So the Cash App is working. Let's give us unto the Lord. Pay your tithe. Amen. Amen. And God will bless you for it as you give unto him. Brother Ron, sir, please pray. Ask God to bless the gift and the giver. Amen. Let's receive a good offering for the Lord. the Lord. Thank you for your giving and may God bless you abundantly and he will. And really we, we are thankful for your giving and your faithfulness to the work of the Lord here and the offerings do go to meet the needs here. It's not just to have something to do, but we are thankful for your faithfulness, your continued support for the things that we do here because it's because of your giving and your unselfish giving that the bills can be paid here. And we thank you for that, and may God bless you abundantly. At this time, Reverend Myers is coming to preach to us. God bless you, sir. How many appreciate Reverend Myers? You know, Reverend Myers does a lot of things that people don't even know about. Number one, he has to put up with me. That's the biggest thing. You don't even say that much when I'm preaching to you. Praise the Lord. And then he does things, and he works, and he doesn't complain, and whatever. And we do appreciate him and all that he does. Praise God. And, and, he, and really, he goes, picks up people. He picks up some of you folks without complaint. And he goes, and he's willing to do that. And we appreciate that. We appreciate him. Praise God. Amen. Amen. It's good to be in God's house. Amen. Amen. To worship Jesus. That's who we're here to worship tonight. Tonight, I'd like to direct your attention to the Gospel of John, chapter 8, reading verses 1 through 11. And Jesus went unto the Mount of Olives, and early in the morning he came again into the temple. And all the people came unto him, and he sat down and taught them. And the scribes and Pharisees brought unto him a woman taken in adultery. And when they had set her in the midst, they say unto him, Master, this woman was taken in adultery in the very act. Now Moses and the law commanded us that such should be stoned. But what sayest thou? This they said, tempting him that they might have to accuse him. But Jesus stooped down and with his finger wrote on the ground as though he heard them not. So when they continued asking him, he lifted up himself and said unto them, He that is without sin among you, let him first cast a stone at her. And again he stooped down and wrote on the ground. And they which heard it, being convicted by their own conscience, went out one by one, beginning at the eldest, even unto the least, unto the last, and Jesus was left alone and the woman standing in the midst. And when Jesus had lifted up himself and saw none but the woman, he said unto her, Woman, where are those thine accusers? Hath no man condemned thee? She said, No man, Lord. And Jesus said unto her, Neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. And I want to use that last verse for a text tonight. And I want to preach the thought or title of a message, A Fresh Start. Pastor, sir, would you please pray? Our living God, we thank you that you are a God of fresh starts. God, that you are willing to forgive and to restore and to renew. I ask you now, God, to bless Reverend Myers as he brings forth this message. Help us to listen to what you have for us. Help, help us to apply it to our hearts and our lives. Lord, do a mighty work in every heart. 
heart. And Lord, we thank you for what you're going to do and what you're going to accomplish. And we give you praise and glory and honor in Christ's name. Amen. 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 People enjoy having a fresh start. How many enjoy having a fresh start? Amen? Amen. For some, it's perhaps a new career. Perhaps for 20 years they have been in, a, uh, in the military, uh, serving their country, and perhaps uh, um, they never thought or dreamed about uh, uh, finding a new career path. Or finding themselves perhaps in a what's seemingly a dead end job, but now they're in a new place uh, and they're doing something that they never thought they would be doing. Before they didn't, before the, the career didn't work out. Or perhaps the criminal who has spent years in prison get, finally gets a break and is able to get out and he gets to start his life or her life over again. Uh, they have a fresh start, uh, building a new life that isn't tied to the old one, but it's something new. There's a person who, who gets in trouble or mess, finds themselves messed up, finds themselves uh, perhaps in a predicament uh, to where um, they... they um, they find themselves in a place where they don't see no way out, uh, but they get told it's okay. You know what? Uh, we're gonna we're gonna have some mercy. We're gonna forget about it. Uh, we're gonna start over. We're gonna have a, a fresh start uh, to this uh, uh, to this situation, and, and don't do it again. They've been given the fresh start. They have been forgiven, pardoned, shown mercy. And here is this woman who was thrown in front of Jesus. How her life was beforehand, uh, we don't know. Uh, we can only perhaps begin to surmise, perhaps uh, only begin to imagine that uh, perhaps her life had been good. Perhaps she had been a faithful wife, uh, a mother of children. Uh, perhaps uh, she had been a good person who had, had followed the law and done uh, what she was supposed to do. But now she's caught in the act of adultery. Maybe if she had done things right, lived right, seemingly having everything in order. A life that she didn't want to see destroyed. But now she's in, the fr she's in front of Jesus caught in the very act of sin, guilty, uh, and now she finds herself standing uh, at a threshold uh, of uh, what's going to happen to me? Uh, is judgment going to come upon me? Uh, what's going to happen? Uh, and and uh, what's, what's, the, the, what's Jesus going to say about all of this? You see, she was guilty, deserving of death. Guilty of sin. This woman had been caught in the very act of adultery. Adultery and fornication. It's still wrong tonight. It doesn't matter what the world might say. It doesn't matter how the world might try to pretty it up. These things are still wrong in the eyes of God. And so there was no denying that it ever happened. It was in the very act. She couldn't say no. They're lying. No, it didn't happen. No, they just dragged me out of my house and they falsely accused me. No, they caught her in the very act. Her demeanor, what was her demeanor as she was thrown there in front of, Je in front of Jesus? Her demeanor, her, her very outlook had to be perhaps one of remorse. Perhaps one crying and in tears, uh, scared, afraid, uh, knowing what was to come. Uh, no doubt these men were not uh, uh, gentle with her. They, they grabbed her and perhaps they, they just threw her in front of her, knowing that she was wrong and she knew she was wrong and she was scared and afraid. Knowing what was to come, confused, perhaps wondering... Who is this Jesus that's in front of me? Well, why am I at the, his feet? Why am I at this place in my life? You see, all of mankind is guilty of sin. All of us, uh, whereas this woman, uh, guilty uh, in the eyes of Almighty God. In Romans chapter 3 and verse 23, he said, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. No one could say, I have never sinned. No one could say that uh, we were perfect in the eyes of God. But rather, uh, uh, God sees everything. He knows our hearts. Uh, he knows uh, uh, the things that go on in our lives and, and, uh, and so to speak we are caught red handed before almighty God and to sin we know is to transgress the word of God to break his laws his commandments and so we as mankind were guilty following our own lust our own desires not uh, 
caring or perhaps thinking about God in any way, uh, doing what we wanted to do because uh, that's what pleased us. That's what brought us pleasure. That's what uh, uh, we were craving for. And so think about God was hard because it meant we had to be spiritual. But we were dead in our sins, in our trespasses. We didn't want to do it. We didn't want to think about God. Uh, we wanted to perhaps uh, run away, uh, get, a, get as far away as we could from God uh, because it took us away from what we wanted and desired. In Romans chapter 8 and verse 7, he said, Because the carnal mind is enmity with, against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. And so when we are living in sin, uh, we were guilty of sin. We were at enmity with God. We were the enemies of Almighty God. Uh, we had no relationship. Uh, we had no right standing before God. Uh, we were as this woman guilty uh, at the very feet of Jesus, uh, at the feet of God. Uh, and God uh, is looking down upon us. Uh, and he wants to show us mercy. He wants to show us grace. Uh, he wants to show us his love. Uh, but will we accept it tonight? And so, they told a master, this woman was taken the very act, and the, the law says she should be stoned. You see, the payment for sin tonight is death. The woman was required to be put to death for her sin. In Leviticus chapter 20 and verse 10, this is the law itself. The man that committeth adultery with another man's wife, even he that committeth adultery with his neighbor's wife, the adulterer and adulteress shall surely be put to death. This is the law of God. This is uh, written by Moses in the mount uh, for the children of Israel to follow. Uh, there could be no de deviation from this law. It was strict. It, it was uh, to the point and they had to follow it uh, every step of the way. Because the Bible says that, that they failed in one part. They were guilty of the whole thing. And so we, uh, what, uh, we were guilty, uh, we were guilty of our sins, uh, we were the ones, uh, we should have been put to death, uh, but Jesus Christ, uh, he came to this earth uh, to die for the sins of the entire world. Both parties were to be put to death. And we find the woman here in front of Jesus, but where was the man? Where was the other person uh, that was guilty of the sin? Uh, they had caught them in the very act according to their own testimony, according to their own words. Uh, but they didn't bring the man to be put to death. All we find is this woman here. And the reason why, why would they do this? Because uh, the Bible tells us what? Uh, they wanted to, to, to find something to accuse Jesus. They wanted to, to trap Jesus. And so there's a payment for sin. Even in today's world, men and women think that uh, there is no payment. They can live however they want to live uh, and be okay. Uh, but there's still a, a payment. There's still a, a judgment that is coming to those uh, who have not been born again by the Spirit of God. Uh, to those uh, who live contrary to the Word of God. In Romans chapter 6 and verse 23. For the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. When a person commits and lives in sin, there is going to be a payment for it. It may not be tomorrow. It may not be right now. It may not be a week from now. But know that there is a payment for sin. We know that death is not just a, it's not just a physical one, but it's a spiritual one. It is ultimately a separation from God. In the end, a lake of fire. Which anyone who is not saved or, or right in the eyes of God will have a part in, which is the second death. Uh, I don't want to go to the lake of fire. I, I don't want to find myself separated from God for all of eternity. No, uh, I want to make sure that my heart's right. Uh, I need to make sure that I have a right relationship with God uh, so that I make it into heaven. We see the lives of people who live in sin. We see the destruction all around us. Uh, all you got to do is look out into this world. Uh, all you got to do is uh, perhaps talk to your neighbor, so to speak. Uh, talk to different ones around you. Uh, and you see the destruction of sin in people's lives. The destruction of self. Whether it's through drugs or alcohol. How sin changes people. Causing them to do the stuff that they wouldn't have done as a five-year-old child. 
You think uh, those who are parents, they, they have kids and they begin to grow up uh, and they're a, a toddler and then they're a young child uh, and then all they, they continue to grow up uh, and perhaps uh, as a child uh, you would never have thought that their life would be where it is now. You would never think, imagine how the child used to be but now their life is destroyed now. They're perhaps uh, uh, in prison or they're doing things that I never taught my child to do that. I taught them the, 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 what happened to that innocence. Doing things they never, you never thought that they would do. But you see tonight, there was a sacrifice for sin. There's a sacrifice. Uh, there's someone who stands uh, in, uh, in, in between us and God, and he makes intercessory. Uh, he makes, he's a mediator. He's someone that's, uh, that steps and say, God, uh, forgive them for they know not what to do. God, uh, have mercy on them. Uh, God, uh, show them mercy one more time. And here for this woman, it was Jesus. Because as he began, he said, He that's without sin among you, let him first uh, cast a stone at her. None of them could say that they had not sinned. Uh, none of them could say that they were uh, guiltless. Uh, no, every single one of them knew in their heart uh, that we, uh, uh, that they were, they were guilty of sin. And so, we see the sacrifice, the innocent uh, dying for the guilty. You see, the law required an offering of atonement for the people. In Exodus chapter 30 and verse 10, And Aaron shall make an atonement upon the horns of it once a year, once in a year with the blood of the sin offering of atonements. Once in the year shall he make atonement upon it throughout your generations. It is most holy unto the Lord. They see Aaron, uh, he was the high priest, uh, the brother of Moses. And so God had commanded him uh, on how to, to make the offerings and how to do the sacrifices. Uh, and there was an uh, a offering of sin, uh, a sin offering for the sins of the people. There was a whole ritual, a way of doing the sacrifice. Things that had to be in place for the sin offering to take place. Uh, the animal had to be unblemished. Uh, there could be no deformities or anything wrong with it. Uh, the priest uh, had to be cleansed first before he could even offer the sin offering for the people. Uh, everything had to be in its place. You see, these animals, they weren't guilty of sin. These animals weren't the ones uh, going out and committing sin. They didn't commit wickedness or do anything uh, that was worthy of death. But yet they were the innocent dying uh, for the sins of the people. They were the ones being put to death uh, for the sins of the people. These animals that were used for food and livestock. And that word atonement, it means a reparation for an offense or injury. Our sin was an offense. It is an offense before Almighty God, and it requires a payment. Uh, you could say, oh, uh, I, uh, I did this, and I did this good work, and I did that good thing. Uh, that doesn't uh, change the fact. Uh, it takes the blood of Jesus uh, to cleanse us from our sins. Uh, it takes the power of Almighty God. Uh, that when He died upon that cross for us, uh, He took your place. Uh, he died for you uh, so that you didn't have to die and go to hell. Jesus was the innocent blood. Jesus went and he died on that cross for our sins. He paid the price uh, having known no sin. He didn't know any sin, uh, but he would take his our sin upon himself. Uh, he would die upon the cross. Uh, he would be separated from his father, the very one that he had been with uh, from eternity past to that very present time. Uh, all of a sudden now he's separated from the father because of our sins. But he didn't stay separated. He died. He took our sins to hell. And he rose again on the third day. He see, he didn't deserve to die on the cross. He had done no wrong. He wasn't a God-hater or, or an adulterer as this woman was. Uh, 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 but he was innocent. Uh, he was someone uh, that he came to this earth. Uh, he wanted to help men and women. Uh, he wanted to save them. Uh, he wanted to transform them. Uh, he wanted to do something in their lives. Uh, something that they couldn't do on themselves. Uh, they couldn't fix themselves. Uh, we couldn't change ourselves. Uh, but Jesus came to change us. Uh, Jesus came to save men and women. To set them free. You see, he died out of love. It was the love for people who hated him. 
The people at that time, they hated him, they despised him, they rejected him, they tried to trap him, they tried to do everything to destroy Jesus. And how much more do people today, they hate God, they hate Christianity, they hate Jesus, and yet Jesus still died for them, Jesus still cares about them, Jesus still paid the price, and Jesus still willing to forgive men and women of their sins. It was love that held him on the cross. It was love for a people who ignore and continue to this day to live how they want. They don't want to live for God. They don't want to give their lives to God. But God still loves them. God still shows uh, men and women uh, 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 um, mercy and gives them second, third, and fourth, and fifth chances. We tell people that Jesus loves you and he wants to save you. But people don't want to accept a God that cares. All they do is find fault with him. All they want to do is uh, find ridicule and mock and, and, uh, and uh, find fault. But God still loves them and God still cares. And tonight, God cares about you. Uh, if you're living in sin, God wants you to get out. Uh, God wants to forgive you. Uh, God wants to change you. Uh, God wants to cleanse you. God wants to do something in your life. Here was this woman caught... And here's Jesus. He said, woman, where are thine accusers? Hath no man condemned thee? She said, no man, Lord. And Jesus said unto her, neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. This woman had a fresh start, a new beginning. She should have, uh, according to the law, been put to death. Uh, but Jesus was forgiven her. Jesus was told her, go and sin no more. He showed her mercy. Uh, when uh, everybody else wanted to condemn her, when the world wants to condemn her, uh, Jesus showed her mercy. He gave her a, a fresh start. Uh, go and sin no more. Yes, you messed up. Yes, you sinned. Uh, yes, you've come short of the glory of God. Uh, but now is the time. To, make, to, 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 to take a fresh start to, to go forward with a new beginning she didn't deserve it she wasn't worthy of any mercy but God showed her mercy in any way it was a fresh start to make things right, to live right, to, to do what's right. And tonight we have an opportunity to live right. We have an opportunity to have that fresh start, to, to go uh, leave this building uh, and say, you know what, uh, I'm no longer going back to the life I lived. Uh, I'm not going to continue to do those things uh, that I once used to do. Uh, I'm a new creature in Christ. Uh, the Bible tells us in 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 17, he said, therefore, if any man be in Christ, uh, he he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. I'm no longer the same person. When someone comes up and asks you, why don't you do those things that, that you used to do? I don't go to the bar rooms anymore. I don't drink anymore. I don't curse anymore. Why? Because Jesus did something on the inside. I can't explain it, but he changed my life. He made me over again. I've got a fresh start. i got a new outlook. i got something to look forward to I'm going to heaven and I'm making it all the way to glory a fresh start as the musician begin to come he said neither do I condemn thee go and sin no more and tonight, God is telling us, uh, go and sin no more. I've already paid the price. Uh, I've already made the sacrifice. Uh, all you got to do is accept what Jesus has offered us freely. It's a free gift, the gift of salvation. Will you accept it tonight? Will you allow Jesus to change your life? With every head bowed and eyes closed, a reverence to the Lord.